Salve te de Scipoli. Uh, we are in Latin 2, chapter 2, and it begins with a translation about the Emperor Charlemagne. It gives a, um, gives a little background on Charlemagne here, and we'll come down here to the translation. Oop, scrolled a little too much there. Okay, come on back up here. There's a vocabulary that goes with the reading, right across from the reading. And we'll get to the Latin right now. Cavodalus, excuse me, chewing a cough drop here. De Carolo Magno, about uh, Charlemagne, Charles the Great. Charles was tall. Eus corpus magnum et forte. His body was big and strong. Magnum et forte. Carewix brevis. His neck was short. Venter projectus. His stomach stuck out. Projectus. Capilli cani. He had gray hair. Voltus gravis. He had a serious look on his face. Oculi vegeti. His eyes were lively. And his voice was clear. Vox clara. Bene valeva. He was in good health. Bene valeva. But ultimus anis ante mortem febri corripie bantur. These are all indicative verbs here. But in the last years, his last years, ultimus anis, um, before his death, ante mortem, he was seized by a fever. A February. Medicos Tom and Odio Habebat, however, he had a dislike for doctors, Medicos, who would not permit him to eat roasted meat, carnes asas, roasted meat, but only boiled, only tantum elixas. Therefore, Eorum concilia numquam patebat. Therefore, he never sought their advice, their concilia. Charles was eques assiduus. He was a dedicated horseman. So that omnes franci, or as, as all Frenchmen, and he was a hunter. Okay, he enjoyed, right down here, he was delighted, he was really delighted by the vapors of the waters. Uh, naturally, excuse me, in hot water springs here. Naturaliter, cal, uh, cal, excuse me, calentium, in which he swam, nataba, with joy. Okay. He had built a royal, where are we down here? He had built, I become where a flute perfect here. He had built a royal palace in Aiken, right here. Let's see if we can find this. I'm losing my place here. Okay, he had built a royal palace, Aquis Grani, in Aiken. And he lived there up to the end of his life. Habitabat, he lived there, Ibi. Ad finam vitae, to the end of his life. Non solum filios, here. Um, he used to invite not only his sons, but also his friends and bodyguards. So he used to invite, in vitabat, not only his sons, but also his friends and his guards of the body, if you like, corporis custodes. Let's come down here just a little bit here. Veniatis omnes et mecum natatis, he says here. May you all come and swim with me. May you come, veniatis as subjunctive, all of you, and may you swim with me, subjunctive here. See the E? That makes it present subjunctive. In Terdum, sometimes a hundred people were swimming together with him. Sometimes, in Terdum, a hundred men 
were swimming Eo Una together with him. His clothing, okay, his clothing was very simple as the Franks wore, Franki Kereba, that was their custom. He was always armed with a sword, right here, Gladio's the sword. He was always armed, that is, he had it around his waist. Okay, he was always armed with a sword, the hilt of which was made of gold or silver. Right here, the hilt, Capulus is the top of the sword, of which Cuius was made, Factus, Erat, of auro gold or of silver, Argento. He did not like wine, okay, and he did not tolerate drunk people. So known Amabat, he did not like wine, nor did he tolerate Tolerabat, homines ebrios, drunk men. While he was eating, okay, <laughs> excuse me, while he ate, books were read, comidebat, libri lege bantur, books were read. He really was pleased with historians and with books of Augustine. He was really pleased with historians, historiques, and books of Augustine. This would be St. Augustine, the famous saint. Afternoon, post meridian, he was accustomed to go to bed. And during the night, not to, his sleep was also often interrupted. In the morning, when he was putting on his clothes, cum vestimenta in dueva, he used to receive people, okay, not only friends, non solum amicus, sed etiam si erant lites, but also if there were disputes, litigation, about what, um, about which he had to decide. De quibus de carnares to decide. Um, de beba, which he needed, about which he needed to decide. Okay. And that is our translation. Let's move along in this chapter. There's your vocabulary. Okay, right there. Just slide that a little bit here. And these are all the words you need to translate. Here's your comprehension questions, which you can answer because we just translated this. There's some pictures. Okay. And here's language fact. This introduces new grammar. Second, third, fourth. Conjugations and I.O. verbs of the third conjugation. <clears throat> Present active and passive subjunctive. So this is doing for the rest of the verbs what chapter one did for the first conjugation. It gave you the active and passive of the first. And now we have the second, third, fourth, and I.O. I.O. verbs, of course, are third that think they're fourth. And here they give examples of that. They give the present subjunctive. First person active, present subjunctive, first person passive. Okay, and you can find these book pages right in the modules. And here's charts. Here's mnemonics here. He fears a giant liar. And I say Clem stings clams in Miami. That's mine. But it gives the stem changes here. Second uh, declension, excuse me, second conjugation has an EA. And... Here's the passive and active of the second. Here's the third, has an A. And the third conjugation passive, right here, follow my cursor. Fourth conjugation has an IA. And the present active and passive, the subjunctive. Okay, and here's your IO verbs, which look the same as fourth conjugation verbs. And then they give you a few hints here. And remember, don't be shy about emailing me about what you don't understand here. Here's some exercises here. Change the indicative verbs into subjunctive. Keep, <coughs> excuse me, keeping, <coughs> get my summer cold going here. Keeping the same person, number, tense, and voice and give the basic meaning. Well, try your best on that. Okay. See what you can come up with. Here's vocabulary that you need to be aware of. Make flashcards out of these and study with somebody. Here's exercise two. Write the Latin word 
to learn the derivative. We may or may not get to that. Exercise three, it says, give the first and second principal part of the conjugation, the verb from each form comes. You just look that up in the dictionary and identify whether the form is indicative, present subjunctive, future, give the basic meaning of the verb, and then give an example here. A little bit complicated, but try to move through that as best as you can when it comes up. And exercise four is a, uh, a dialogue here. We may or may not do that. And exercise five is another dialogue, which we may or may not do, depending on our schedule. And here's language fact two, the place where, place to which, and place from which with the names of time. We're going to get into the ablative case with this and the accusative. If you're going away from a place, you use the ablative. If you're going toward it, you use the accusative. And there's a thing called the locative here, which looks like the genitive. If you're right there at, I live at Rome. Okay. And they give you some special things like Rus and Domus there. And we're coming toward the end. Okay, talks about the word domus here. Domi means at home. A lot of, uh, and then there's a chart here which explains what cases you use for what purpose. Place where, place where here, place to which, place from which. Okay, and what cases, preposition or not. And then exercise six is about places. And we may or may not be able to get this. We'll just see how that goes. And there's some cities there. And at least it shows you that there's a special way of there. And here is some more Latin here, which we probably will not get to because we need to move on. And there's some things from Cicero. And here's some vocabulary for that reading. So we'll see. If you're interested in knowing what all of that is about, just email me and say, Mr. Sears, can you give me a, a rundown of those last pages in Chapter 2? So this looks like comprehension questions about what they just translated. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> we will close out now on uh, Chapter 2. And feel free to email about me about anything you don't understand. T Sears at proxlearn.com. Wale Tata Skippily.